Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the ArrayList add method. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website javacjava.com, select begin, and scroll all the way down here to the array list add method. Okay, the add method is very useful for appending and inserting elements into an array list. There are two overloaded versions of the add method. As you can see up here, you've got the add that takes a, just a single argument of a generic type, right? And then the add method that takes the two parameters here. And the first one is index, which is index starts off at zero, and the second one is the element. Okay, okay. So the first version has only one parameter and simply appends the parameter object to the end of the array list. If you try to add an object that is not compatible with the class or interface specified in the type variable, and this is the type variable right here, a compiler, or well actually when you're declaring it, this is the type variable here, a compiler error will occur, okay? So for example, um, just declaring and initializing an array list object here, array list, and I'm specifying string builder as the class that I want to only allow in here, okay? And string builder has no subclasses that'll come into play in my, uh, when I go through the source code there. All right, and I've got a list for my reference variable here and just a new array list. And I use the basically like the inferred syntax here for the over here when um, instantiating it here. So basically, uh, since I left the diamond syntax empty, it'll, it knows that only string builder is allowed here. I'll, fluctuate between both of those in various different methods or in various different tutorials there so all right so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, reference variable a list dot dot operator to invoke the add method and a new string builder Alaska okay and add method to another new string builder New York and add another new string builder Vermont okay so now if we display our uh, array to the console using the print line method it's going to display Alaska New York Vermont Okay, exactly what we'd expect, just these three elements in here. So in the example above, you can plainly see that the add method simply appends the object parameter as a new element in the array list. The array list will, grow, uh, will dynamically grow to accommodate new elements as they are added. The second version takes two parameters. The first parameter is the index number to insert a new element at, right? Remember, array list elements begin at index zero. The second parameter is simply the object element to insert. Building on the array instance from the above, from the example above, I will demonstrate how to add a couple of new records, right? So we're still dealing with A-list here, right? And we still, A-list currently contains Alaska, New York, Vermont. So I'm going to use the add method with the uh, basically two parameters there. And at index number one, which is New York, right? It'll go ahead and insert it in between that, right here, right? So new string builder, Hawaii. So insert between Alaska and New York. And then I'm going to invoke the add method again, passing three. Now remember our current, um, if we did zero, one, two, and we did three right here, right? If we had done three up here, we'd get a, an exception thrown, basically because it'd be like, I think array index out of bounds or something like that. But now we have four elements in this array at this point here. So I can uh, go ahead and, so we have Alaska, Hawaii, New York, and Vermont. So I'm gonna insert it between New York and Vermont, which is index number three at this point. I'm gonna insert Ohio. So now i uh, basically insert between New York and Vermont. If we display that to the console, we get Alaska, Hawaii, New York, Ohio, and Vermont. Five elements total in there. Okay, so pretty simple and straightforward. But I'm gonna go through some uh, other things here, especially that has to do with, with this particular type variable that we display in the diamond syntax here, down here in the code there. Some cool stuff there. All right, let's go ahead and come down here. Highlight all this code. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move the browser off screen here. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right-clicking, selecting New Shortcut, CMD, Next, to Finish. It's just that easy. Open that up. First thing we're going to do is type in Java C, which is the Java compiler. You should see all of this stuff uh, scroll by. However, if you get an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. 
CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm gonna make a directory here called Java using the MD command. I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. I'm gonna make another directory, a uh, subdirectory under here called um, ArrayList add. Change directories to the ArrayList add folder. And notepad ArrayList add dot Java. Okay. Let's go ahead and create that. Control V to paste or right click and select paste. All right, save. Okay, so the first thing I've got up here is import java.util.arraylist. We could have done star two as well, but um, out of the uh, the util, java util package there, arraylist is the only class that we need to import here for this particular example. So just one single little class, arraylist add and public static void main, there's our main method entry point. And from here, to here, I'm going to basically just be running everything that uh, <clears throat> that we talked about up there, right? Now down here, I've got array list, and then runtime exception is the is the class that I'm putting in here for the type variable, right inside of there, and then the reference variable re list. Okay. Now what that, and then of course I'm using basically just a you know the inferred syntax here as well. Um, in the next one, we'll get down a little further. So basically everything that we place into this array list has to be a runtime exception or a subclass of runtime exception. Okay, so if you've been watching my tutorial, especially on the exception handling, I'm sure you realize that, uh, you know, um, the runtime exception class are unchecked exceptions, right? And these are all the direct known subclasses. So I just picked, uh, picked a few of them there um, to go ahead and add in. Oh, uh, wait. Like a new no pointer exception, a new string index out of bounds exception, and a new class cast exception. So these are all subclasses of runtime exception. In other words, runtime exception is the superclass of no pointer exception, string index out of bounds exception, class cast exception, and illegal argument exception. Now you notice here I use the second overloaded version of the, the two parameter um, method here. And I'm going to insert illegal argument and uh, exception in front of new class cast exception. So when that prints out there. All right, and then the final thing I've done, well actually let's just go ahead and save this and run it here and I'll go over line by line a little bit after we do that. So let's clear our screen, Java C to compile this file here. Java to run the Java virtual machine and we want to invoke the ArrayList add class. <clears throat> and of course you can see up top here we get the Alaska, New York, Vermont on the simple ads right here. And then we go ahead and add in at uh, basically, you know, position number one, which would be in between Alaska and New York. Uh, we add in Hawaii, right? And you can see that ads right up here. And then position number three in this particular case, which would be zero, one, two. And then Vermont was right after there. We add in Ohio, stick that one, insert that back in there. So basically like, for example, the string builder class has an add method or an append method and an insert method. It's like they combined them both. Um, you know, kind of think of it as like combined both here. You know, if you want to add, it'll just append it to the end. If you want to add plus the uh, you know the two argument thing, it'll actually like insert this record there. So it's kind of like a dual purpose one there, <clears throat> which is kind of cool. So, and then let's um, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, get some get some water here. All right, so down to the exception list stuff here. All right, so runtime exception, and I added in all of these classes, all of you know, new objects, no pointer objects, string index out of bounds, class cast exception, and then I basically added, well, inserted more, more accurately there, the illegal argument exception there. And so you can see we've got all of the exceptions in this um, humorous array here, array list here. So this, this, I just threw this kind of in here to demonstrate, you know, um, you can put any type of objects in here. As a matter of fact, objects are the only things that you can, that an array list can contain. So if you look, if you look at like other tutorials out there, they're using like strings, right? Which are really, really simple, but sometimes that, uh, that doesn't quite click with people that, Hey, you know, a string is an object too, as well. We're not just building like a simple, you know, primitive array here. This, the, the array list can take, 
only object types there. No primitive types there in, are allowed in a um, in an array list. So we couldn't put something in here like, for example, int, right? That is not going to fly. All right, and so the last thing I've done down here is is number there. It's basically the type variable in the diamond syntax, generics, right? And then over here, I just did the, uh, you know, where you can specify it in here too, to where it's not inferred like up here, right? And so the number class, if you're not familiar with that, the number class is the super class of all of the, like, um, the primitive wrapper classes, like, you know, byte, double, float, integer, long, so on and so forth there, right? So, um, byte, right? is a subclass of the of the number class. You can see public final class byte extends number here, right? So by specifying number in here, we're basically allowing, you know, num the number class itself or any subclass or anything derived from the number class to be put in here. So new byte, new integer, right? And it's in between byte and integer add a new double here and then display that to the console so that's what we end up with the the output on that 41 4.75 and 1024 right so that's basically the way this works here right it's almost like a uh, like a bounded type more than just a regular old good old type in there but just so you know that you can put the class or subclasses in there okay so i'm um, gonna go ahead and close out of that close out of that and leave you guys with some final thoughts so Basically, when specifying the type variable inside the diamond syntax, you can add objects of that class or any subclass that is derived from that class. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.